In this problem, we're going to find the amount of energy stored in the magnetic field generated by a toroid uh, coil. So we call the formula for the amount of energy stored. It's equal to the volume integral over the magnetic field. And then for a toroid with a, a cross section that looks something like this, so you can imagine this part being the center of the entire, entire toroid. And then over here, I'm going to let this length be equal to A. And then uh, this length here all the way to the end will be equal to b and then this will have a height of h and then as you recall in chapter 5 you can uh, use Ampere's law to find the magnetic field uh, within this region and uh, there was also an argument about why there is only a magnetic field within this region so if we take the volume integral all we have to do is just to take the inner region the region wrapped around by the coil itself so uh, the magnetic field if you use Ampere's law you'll find that it's equal to mu n i divided by 2 pi s, where s is the distance from the center all the way to the point that you're at. So this will be s. So in order to calculate this, so in this case we're going to use cylindrical coordinates. So we're going to have a, have a triple integral. And then b square, I'm just going to square these numbers, 4 pi square, s square. And then dv, the dv for a for cylindrical coordinates is equal to ds, so the change within this direction, then times s d theta dz. So dz will be the height, d theta would be the kind of angular direction. So ds it goes from ranges from a to b. Theta ranges from zero to two pi, and then h uh, z dz ranges from zero to h. So essentially, this whole integral draws out the entire region wrapped around by the coil which is where the magnetic field is. In all other regions, it's, uh, the magnetic field is equal to zero. So that's why we're integrating uh, along this region here. So immediately, we can take away some of the constants first. So I have 8 pi square, n square, i square. And then immediately, you see that there are no z terms inside. So I can integrate this out first. So I get h. There are no theta terms. So I can integrate out 2 pi. So all we're left with, so there's an s here that cancels out, all we're left with is this rather simple integral. And then once you evaluate this integral, it's just equal to the natural log of s. You evaluate it from a to b. And then, so let's just copy everything we have for now. So uh, these constants, they cancel out. So we have mu n square i square h divided by 4 pi, and then multiplied by this thing over here, which is natural log b minus natural log a, which is equal to natural log b over a. So this is simple enough. So we found the amount of uh, energy uh, that's stored inside the magnetic field generated by a toroid. Now we need to verify the formula uh, that energy is also given by 1 half times the inductance times the current square. And uh, earlier in the book, uh, they've proved the inductance for a, a toroid is equal to uh, mu n square h divided by 2 pi natural log b over a so this is a result that was proven in the book earlier in the example so i'm going to use it directly here so i'm going to substitute it the in, uh, the self inductance and then i'm going to multiply it by i square and then you see that once you just combine everything so you combine everything the denominator becomes 4 pi it's completely identical to the answer we obtained through integration. So this checks that this formula and this formula, they're both uh, consistent.